Thank you for having me here. Uh, it's the single most coolest place I've given a talk at, so thumbs up. And believe it or not, it's the first talk I do under the water. Uh, so anyway, uh, I will be talking about rap rap. Uh, Julian kind of introduced it, but I want to use this opportunity for a little survey. So I want to ask you guys who knows what rap rap is. Can you raise your hand? Okay, one, two. Okay, good. <laughs> so rap rap is nothing mysterious. It just means replicating rapid prototyper. Rapid prototyper might be more familiar with in the crowd. Does any of you know what the rapid prototyping is? Okay. Uh, so rapid prototyping is just a fancy word for 3D printing. And I'm sure that <laughs> many of you have heard lately about 3D printing. So who knows 3D printing? Now we're talking. So RepRap is a project of creating open source 3D printer. Uh, I will start my talk by reintroducing you to the 3D printing. Uh, it's nothing special. It's nothing like a rocket science. It's technology which is around for 30 years already. And uh, most of you probably know something like a mill or lathe. But it's completely different than that. Uh, instead of taking stuff out of a giant chunk of uh, material, you are building objects from thin air. And it might sound really hard, but it's actually quite easy. Uh, imagine that you are building a potato out of potato chips by stacking simple, small layers on top of each other. This is uh, how one of the layer might look like. And if you have more of them on top of each other, you will end up with a simple whistle, which can actually blow. Uh, so this is how it looks. I will be having a demo of 3D printing later on during the, during the pod. But you can see how it simply lays down the plastic. And it's really simple. Uh, basically, have you heard of hot glue gun? It basically looks like a squirt gun, but instead of water, it's squirt hot glue, which can burn you. So this is just fancier version of that. It squirts out plastic, and it builds objects. It's really simple. I have one of my machines here. Uh, wow, where should I put it? Probably here. Can you see it? No. OK. Can you see it now? Good. It's a bit mangled. I've been talking a lot, so it, hopefully it will print. Uh, but now back to 3D printing. Uh, 3D printing is really amazing. It uh, allows us to share the objects we would not be able to share fast enough or with enough people. There's a story I like to tell about the guy actually here from Germany. Uh, his nickname is Zego, but I don't know his real name, but you know, internet. So he is actually the guy who designed the whistle I was showing before. And he printed it, and he was amazed that it actually can whistle. So he shared it online. And now listen to that. After an hour or so, people are all around the planet were already whistling with their own copy of the whistle, which is amazing. If you try to find another way how to make a whistle in Germany and have it in New York in one hour, you don't have a lot of options for that. So this is one of the most amazing things about 3D printing, which basically is Internet of Things. You won't be going to a shop and buying stuff, but you will just search a Google and download a file and print it out in, I guess, a few years. Uh, another super cool thing about 3D printing is unlimited customizability. I don't know if you can see what's on the picture. It looks like a red blob from here, but uh, it's actually loads of whistles, and each of them is customized. Uh, when I had a little bit more time, I usually printed a small whistle for each of the 
listeners I had on my talks, but, well, sorry guys. Uh, but what I'm talking about is that actually a friend of mine told me, hey Joe, but it doesn't make sense to print thousands of the same whistles. It's the case for using injection molding and create a mold and punch one missile after another in China. So I said, yeah, and I made it better. Basically, I created a program which chewed through all the names of the viewers of the talk or listeners and created custom whistle for everyone. And for a 3D printer, it doesn't matter if all the whistles are same or if each of them is quite different. And it worked out quite well. Unfortunately, on the talk, there was, it was a bit harder to distribute them. But yeah, it's still a nice idea. You can do really crazy things with 3D printing or the 3D printing as we know it. Uh, this is a picture. It's an example of one small printed object. And it tries to show you the detail at which it can actually print. So here, the layers. Remember at the beginning as we were showing the small slice of the whistle. Here are uh, uh, 0.1 millimeters, or if you want to say it really fancy and profound, you can say 100 microns. So basically it's 10 layers per millimeter. And this one is actually printed from ABS. Uh, who knows what ABS is? It's not active brake system from the car, but it's actually the same material which Lego is made out of. So it can tell you how the objects can be tough, because I guess most of you have stepped on a Lego brake and it hurts a lot. Uh, and if you are going to ask, yes, you can print Lego bricks and you can make them custom. So that is pretty cool too. Uh, I will be talking about another cool, uh, another cool materials you can print out of. So you can print out of porcelain, for example, or another ceramics. Uh, this is project made by Unfold. He's from Belgium, and he modified his printer to be able to print porcelain, which is quite amazing because porcelain is food safe, so you can print usable stuff for feeding someone, or it's really high temp, so you can print parts for motors, I guess. And this will be good for ladies, I guess. You can print chocolate. Uh, everybody asks if I can print chocolate. Yes, you can print chocolate. Unfortunately, it's not the nice chocolate, the 90% one, but it's like the, you know, colored fat sweetened. So it's kind of chocolate. It's sweet, but it's not the good stuff. But yeah, you can 3D print chocolate. You can print polycarbonate. Uh, polycarbonate is really interesting material. Uh, for example, bulletproof glass is made out of polycarbonate. So you can print really tough stuff. You can print electronics. Uh, actually, a friend of mine uh, whose name is Rich Jones, he comes from University of Bath, which is actually from RepRap is originated. Uh, he created a printer which can print a special alloy of metal. It's solder and a little bit of indium. And you can basically print electronics for another printer. So it adds to the replicability of the 3D printer. Uh, here's another of my cool projects. You can print glasses. Unfortunately, you can't print the lenses, but there is a really cool story about how I made those glasses. Uh, they are open source, by the way, so you can download them, and I will be really happy if you do so, and if you improve them so when I print them next time, I won't be looking like a dork. So uh, imagine that how you, if you take 3D printed glasses to the I don't, optometrist, or how is it called in English, He'll be looking, oh, it's, well, what is this? I won't be doing the lenses for that. So I had to trick them. 
I had to pick the lenses, no, not the lenses, the frames I actually kind of liked. And I told them, yeah, I like them, so can you cut the lenses for that? Yeah, yeah. So next day I came in the shop and I said, oh, I don't like the frames anymore. So, but I will buy the lenses so you don't have, you don't have to have the loss. And I went home and I scanned the lenses and I made frames by the lens shape. And that was quite cool because next day I came back with the, lens, uh, with the finished glasses and the guys were amazed because actually the price of the machine is lower than the cost of the original frames I fake picked. So it's really amazing. And if you imagine that the material cost for frames like that is, oh, I know it in Czech rounds. Now I have to count it. It's like five Czech rounds. So it's 20 cents, yeah, something like that. Uh, it's much cheaper than if you, you know, if you sit on your glasses, it's really bad. And it costs hundreds of euros. But nowadays, you can just print a new piece for free. And actually, the lenses cost like 300 times more than the frames if you buy them. Uh, but yeah, why would we stay on the planet Earth if we can use 3D printing somewhere else? There's a really cool project uh, by a friend of mine, uh, Tomáš Rosek. He's a Czech architect. He was working for uh, NASA for some time. And actually, he had a really good idea that you can use the local materials for printing something. So instead of transferring loads and loads and loads of material from uh, Earth to Moon, you can use the moon dust, and it's really easy to just with a uh, magnetron from microwave to make it into a rock solid structure. So you can create a sort of framework of building, and you don't have to take the basic building blocks to the moon, which is really expensive. Or if you traveling in space, for example, in the next Mars mission, well, the first manned mission, they will be having a 3D printer on the board of the spacecraft because they can't bring all the spare parts they need. But they can have 3D printer and a lot of the material. And when they have problem, they just call Houston, we have problem, can you send us the file? They will send them the file and they will print replacement part, which is really amazing. But I want to talk a bit about open source. This is RepRap is one of the don't wave at me. I have loads of time. <laughs> uh, RepRap is fully open source. That means that you can download it and build it yourself. It's actually designed the way that the non-printed parts are sourceable in local shops, which is quite cool. Uh, it allows for much faster development. And what is really cool, RepRap is not co-founded, as Julian said, or something. It's run completely by evolutionary principles. There's no one in charge. So the, the, the core developer I have in my title is basically I have to take out the spam from wiki page. But you know, nothing too serious. Everyone can do everything. And actually gave me all the education I needed because everything was shared. That's quite cool. Here you can see a family tree, how it evolved. But I think we need to go deeper and deeper and deeper. So this is just uh, what my printer uh, managed to have as offsprings. I myself printed like 300 more 3D printers, which are all around the planet. Uh, there's quite a lot of them. Uh, the RepRap is the most widespread 3D printer on the planet. There's like 60 to 80,000 of them, which is a lot. But unfortunately, we don't know because people build them themselves and not all of them are active on the internet. Oh, OK. Uh, last slide. Uh, people ask me every time when I think when 3D printer will be in every home. I don't know. I don't want to make fool out of myself that if I say it will be in five years and it will be in two. 
well, no. But what I can tell you now that 3D printers are all around you. There's many hacker spaces and shared spaces like that in every big city. So if you want to experience 3D printing, you can just find local hacker space and visit them, and they will be happy to help you with 3D printing. And if you want to build your own 3D printer, they can help you too. So I guess that's everything. Thank <laughs> you.